What's up, everyone? This is Kyle. Welcome to another installment of Basketball Card Roulette. As you can see, I'm still here on the Vegas Strip. Um, so let's just have a good time. Let's see what we can do here. We are going to talk about relics today. And I want to create an objective for the end of this episode. I want to see, I want to go through 100 of these cards, and I'm going to pick out three. If I had to pick three relics uh, from this, from all of these cards to own, which ones would I choose and why? And it doesn't have to be the most expensive ones. Which ones would I choose and why? So uh, let's see how we're going to sort them. I feels like every episode has been highest SRP. And I, I might just have to take this off the wheel at some point. But the wheel has spoken. We're going to get some good relics. Um, I, I'm excited for this. I am a relic collector. I love memorabilia cards. I know a lot of people don't. Granted, I know there's a lot of junk out there when it comes to memorabilia cards, but there's a lot of really cool stuff as well. So here we go. Highest SRP. I can already see some good stuff. Which one? I, I'm pretty excited about this. Which one would I choose and why? So I'm looking for three. But we're going to look at a hundred of these. So, um, Let's start off just looking at the very first one here, $25,000. Marked down from 100000 so hey, 75% off, right? And um, one thing I like about the Panini 101 relics, though, is that a lot of them use this blue hollow foil, and it just looks really good. I know I've been a critic of, I don't like the emerald, the, the green hollow foil for stuff that's usually numbered to five, just because it doesn't go with Pacers. I guess if it's a Celtics card, it's awesome. I don't like red typically for the same reason. I feel like silver and gold can go with any team, as can this, um, this blue, you know, kind of bluish 101 hollow foil. Just looks really nice. Looks great in this scan, even though their scans are, are garbage on here uh, a lot of times. Um, and looks great in person too, even though I haven't seen that specific card in person. I do have one of ones. Okay, so keep going. We got a Giannis rookie. We have a really nice KD limited logos. You didn't see a lot of the limited logos that took a horizontal design, so that's pretty cool. Um, we've got a LeBron second year jersey auto. Like these cards here, even though they're priced high, they're not. They don't really stand out to me. Here's a um, Nebula logo man, which this was the first, I believe Spectra was the first Chromium logo man. I talked about that in the episode. This dude signed all his RPAs on the patch too. So like he signed everything twice. I don't understand why we hear about athletes that are trying to sign as little as possible and reduce their signatures. And he signed everything twice. So maybe, maybe rookie life was really boring at that point. Who knows? But um, so anyway, 13K, and that's yours, right? We've got more Giannis. We've got Jeremy Lin, more Giannis. Um, this has come up before on our rocket search. We've got a Bird Magic dual patch here, numbered to 40. That was a cool set in general. Um, I know there's a Jermaine O'Neal and Ron Artest. I'm not sure if I have it. Actually, I think I don't because I was bothered because the Ron Artest said Kings, even though it was the Pacers patch. Stupid reasons. I wish I had picked it up. I didn't. Um, patches on here are not all that impressive, though. Just kind of trim patches. And I know people have tried to tell me, well, trim is, is not a patch. Yes, trim is considered a patch. It's considered a prime piece. A lot of times, though, you'll see it in some of the cards that are numbered to, like, 25. They might have trim, whereas some of your cards numbered to 10 won't you know sometimes they'll have a nicer one like this Odom here but you'll still see trim and lower numbered stuff too so it is what it is there's a DeAndre Hunter RPA I've talked about this Maravich before talked about why it's significant um I think that's when I did the the manufacturer episode I talked about Upper Deck and Upper Deck's the only company that has used a jazz jersey from Maravich so don't be surprised to see that on my top three. I've talked about it before. It's important, but we'll see. Maybe there's something on here that just absolutely wows me. Um, but I can tell you it's not a Diallo RPA, even though the acetate RPAs are nice looking cards. It's not this Kobe sticker auto with kind of a weak patch. Um, at least you can see though, Comp C is um, 
stepping their scan game up a little bit for some of this higher price, newer stuff that they're getting in. Those scans look a lot better um, than some of the older ones. You can see that. We've got Clay, we've got Beal, we've got Curry. This isn't doesn't look like the prime, though. If it is, it's just a one. No, that's not a prime. So that's just a basic jersey version. Still a nice-looking card. Um, a lot of people didn't like when they moved the silhouettes to the center of the relic um, because they used to be, you know, more traditionally they're on the side. So that was something that people kind of had to come to grips with after a while. Um, here we've got some Michael Porter, some DeAndre Ayton. These cards, in my opinion, are just ugly. Just the, I don't know, the hyper, prism hyper. It's got, it makes for a lot of um, print lines. I'm not sure if these are on card or not. I think they're sticker. That's the one thing. If it is sticker, the hyper kind of hides that. But it's still just um, just an ugly card. Maybe it looks nicer in person. We've got the Luca's mom signature here at least the one that people allege is his mother's signature. We've got some DiVincenzo. Um, here's the dual Logo Man booklet that I talked about in one of my Logo Man episodes. Got this LeBron James booklet here. And, and booklets, you know, they're hard to store. There's issues with them. But one thing that's cool about this booklet is these – Silver pieces here are from um, an all-star game warm-up. Panini had a lot of those warm-ups. They used him as prime for a while. It gave him a lot of prime material to use because those, I don't know what you, I'm not going to call them sequins, but for lack of a better word, I guess sequins, whatever you want to call that design. Um, there was a lot of them on those warm-ups. So. And let's go back and look. Let's keep going. So we've got LeBron. <laughs> this guy here, his relics, they're not a thousand dollars, but they do sell for they do sell pretty well. In fact, I've pulled some amount of dollar bins and gotten 30 or 40 bucks out of them. Um, let's see here. It shot us up the page a little bit. Let's see what else we have. A Steven Adams 101. We have another curry, just base relic talked about the Bill Russells before. That relic is more of a prop. He didn't wear that. Got a nice Dirk patch there. Um, kind of a cool trio here with Kobe, Lamar Odom, and Pau Gasol. We've got a Celtics quad here that J.R. Giddens managed to um, get on, although the prime pieces here are pretty um, unremarkable. But that is supposed to be the prime version. It's numbered to 10. So just, yeah, if you got that rare pull, you got stuck with J.R. Giddens, and then you got bad patches for the other guys. That would be unfortunate. I like this Irving relic here, although it is just plain jersey. Talked about that. A lot of these I saw on the Upper Deck episode. This was a, or I talked about on that episode, this was a cool idea here. But the sticker autos kind of kill it for me, and the, the patch... I don't know, kind of just a basic little patch. There, there are better Magic and Bird duels out there, although um, always, always nice to have another one. Here's a Westbrook RPA. Uh, I would steer clear of these. A lot of this is bankruptcy-related, especially if it's non-numbered. Not to say that it's, it's fake. It's not to say that you know, it could be a real logo man in a replacement card, but I would steer clear of it because there's a lot of questions surrounding those. Um, I've never even seen this Zion impressions, but um, I'm not impressed by it. Let's see what else we have here. This was a, Mammoth Materials was has been a pretty cool set before. I know the the patch versions are usually numbered to five, so those are tough to track down. We've got a Kawhi rookie auto. We've got a um, nice Kimball Walker RPA here. Pretty cool LeBron duel, Sean Marion, Logo Man, Donovan Mitchell, nameplate. And there you have it. So if I had to choose three of these, and let's say price is not an issue. So I'm not choosing the best buys here. What are the three cards that I like the most and why? Um, I'm going to go with this LeBron card here because, as I mentioned, it's got that foil that I like. It's a one-on-one. Um, although it is a – the 
patches are different up here. It is still the red or maroon or whatever you want to call it jerseys. Um, so it does kind of match. Good looking card, good eye appeal on that card. I've always liked the jumbo flawless patches and that was before they started getting smaller and smaller. So that's one of the cards I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose this Maravich because we didn't get jazz patches from anyone else. And that's just a cool looking card to me. Card number three, I'm probably going to choose this LeBron booklet just because of the, they took the time to make sure there were different styles of patches in there, even though a couple of them are kind of plain. I like that LeBron booklet. So I'm going to go with that one. So there you have it. Those are my picks. Um, memorabilia edition. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and until next time, I will talk to you later. Oh, 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 oh,